100. I score 90. It's also, it's also one grade one. But yours is bigger than mine. So if we calculate all the scores obtained in the individual subjects and then come up with the best of six, most likely the best score will be six, 600, right? So if we put the scores together and you obtain, let's say, 459 and I obtain 458, it means you deserve to go to the school, even though we may have the same grades, like grade six, grade six, but the scores are what? Different. So that was the reason why this computerization came about to bring some transparency and then also at least bring some meritocracy in the, in the system. But the reason why reporting CSSPS was caused, many advances had become corrupt. It was a gold mine, gold season for admissions, and we wanted to end that system and bring in a much more meritorious system, much more equitable system that all citizens could trust. 17 years after its introduction, corruption continues to erode the integrity of the system. In 2022, the fourth estate went undercover to ascertain whether indeed cash can influence the placement of candidates into top grade senior high schools. The Ministry of Education set up a resolution center at the Nat Hall complex to resolve complaints regarding the computerized school placement system. When the fourth estate visited the center, desperate parents were found negotiating and seeking help on the placement of their wards. In that building was a network of security men and cleaners who served as liaisons between the desperate parent and officials of the CSSPS. The fourth estate reporter who went undercover met Eric Agri, a cleaner. He indicated he could help change a placement from a Pam Senior High School to Mfantiman Senior High School at a fee. Yeah, mm -hmm. But in less than 24 hours, Eric increased the amount from 7,000 to 7,500 Ghana cities and would not reduce it. Eric and Rachel Aite, another member of the syndicate, could not do the placement from a Pam Senior High School to Infantiman because the candidate had enrolled in the school. We presented another candidate who had been placed in Wesley Girls in Accra and wanted a higher grade school, Agri Memorial Zion Senior High School in Cape Coast. Eric demanded 8,500 Ghana cities for that slot. After demanding and receiving payments, the syndicates changed the placements of the candidates from Accra Girls Wesley to Agri Memorial Zion Senior High School in two days. Why are they? Mm -hmm. He did this with support from another member of the syndicate introduced as Nathaniel. Our investigation later revealed that he is Simon Agri, the brother of Eric Agri. In the course of this investigation, the fourth estate had reports that some parents paid but could not get placement. In fact, I have a friend, okay, who paid 10,000 cities for his daughter to get enrollment 
admission to a certain pay the money and a year and a half after a year and a half after you have to enroll the daughter in a private of senior high school. At the peak of the school selection process, a parent, Maxwell Mundi, wrote a two-part open letter to Ghana's education minister. He narrated his experience with a man who demanded 3,000 Ghana cities from him to place his daughter in Methodist Girls Senior High School, Manfei. When you have a situation where the grade A schools, the category A schools, about 55 or so of them, um, will now have to limit their in intake to a single track and not a double track. Yes, government has expanded facilities. Government has invested hugely in expanding facilities. But I'm not sure government has doubled intake in the grade A schools. And that is where there's pressure. So it was expected that as there won't be any more double track, um, there will be enhanced competition. And that is where if that competition is not managed well, mm. then it becomes explosive and and then you have corruption tendencies creeping in. Mimi she will be say on to nibu or still west yarn or pe at on now. I feel no more twenty k Missy, what do you catch out? Twenty K Rachel seems to be the most trusted member of the syndicate whom everyone recommends. It was believed that she never failed to place her students once the money she demanded was paid. Throughout her investigations, she was communicating with other members of the syndicate whom she claimed were staff at the Ministry of Education. In the course of her investigation, she constantly received and forwarded messages of available schools and slots to Eric and other frontline team members at the placement center. In one of our meetings, Eric received a list of schools with slots for paid placement. In some cases, when one was unable to pay, the slots were sold to others who could afford to pay higher. In one instance, we could not get into Wesley Girls High School because we could not afford it. At the placement center, almost every security or staff there knew about Eric's network and could easily direct you to him for paid placement. Okay. 
opportunity niba na to to be timi aye intuit ma ma ga so un tot tani da bo eh ni oni ni o baba do ni ne ho no na onu so aye no na so ba ba cheke se no kwa ni fu na ba okay okay it was for this reason that the second reporter from the fourth estate was directed to Eric. He wanted a candidate placed in Presbyterian Senior High Technical School to add Bishop Porter Gales Takrade. Eric requested 7,000 Ghana cities. When we offered 5,000 cities, he declined and returned the money. He was not taking a pessoa less than 7,000 Ghana cities. <laughs> I don't know if you keep money, because me, if I say me can take money, unless I sleep. Let me try to chop what I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I boil it rough rough. I mean, 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 I we requested another placement to be done. The person was originally placed at Presbyterian Senior High School, Ibri, but we requested Wesley Girl Senior High School. Eric demanded 11,000 Ghana cities and took the money. Uh, Eric? When the second placement delayed and we pestered Eric, he finally led us to ritual. Hey, Radiesu. And I want to send him evidence. Would you, Mati? Me kwa koshe wa. Sa, Mati, thank you. Me kwa koshe sisi. They eventually placed the candidate in Infantiman, a Category A school. With 8,500 cities, 
The CSSPS was undermined as placements was changed from Accra Wesley Girls to Agri Memorial Zion School, Cape Coast. And with 11,000 Ghana cities, placements was changed from Presbyterian Senior High Technical School, Ebri, to Mfantman Girls Senior High School. The most sought after Category A schools, such as Wesley Girls, at the time of our investigation were going for as high as 20,000 Ghana cities. If we are resorting to use um, the aggregates instead of the raw scores. Then to me, it makes no sense to have a computerized system. It should be given back to the heads of SHS. But if we are to use the raw scores, I think that is the best policy. And the thing, uh, sorry, the system should be, of course, you know, enhanced through life, you know, life um, placement. Um, instant delivery of results. I mean, it's, it's not the best, but I think that um, people should come up with ideas of how it can improve the system instead of condemning it. Because even in a state, it's still the best public admission system. In Well, the fourth uh, estate, Manasseh Azuri, uh, when it has been uh, giving uh, the following update. So far, eight people have been arrested in connection with this investigation. Two other people have been named who are on the run. I can confirm that the police have charged these eight suspects and they are before court. And uh, the police have also taken whatever evidence they need from us. And we hope that as time goes on, they may be able to reach out to uh, beyond these four, sorry, eight, and then get to whoever served as a link between these uh, cleaners and other intermediaries and also uh, the Ghana Education Service Director General and the Minister of Education because only the two people could have okayed any placement that was made into a Category A school and so they should be able to know who brought what name to them for approval. Well, we hear from the Education Minister shortly. Right now, though, let's speak to Executive Director of the uh, Institute for Education Studies, Dr. Peter Anti. Thank you uh, for your time here on the poll. So, uh, looking at some of the shocking revelations, uh, what, what's the way forward for you and how do you feel that we can put an end to this? Good afternoon. I, I, I think that the way forward is one for us to... Um, acknowledge the fact that this problem is multifaceted, it is complex and complicated, and therefore, if we really want to address it, we need to tackle it from different fronts. I, I appreciate the fact that the former Director General of Education is calling for a uh, court for investigation, and we would want to know the extent to which that investigation uh, was carried out, and if there are reports, those reports should be made available to all of us so that we will appreciate that. Again, it also means that we need to overhaul the system. I mean, the whole school placement system needs to overhaul it because it's been in place for over, it, it, it was implemented in 2005. We are now in 2023. So it's been in place for over 15 years. And I, I am not aware of any comprehensive evaluation that have been done in respect to this policy in terms of its operation, operationalizations. Of course, if you, have, if you read literature on school placement, you would see this issue being mentioned by various writers and researchers as one of the challenges facing the system. And therefore, with this documentary evidence, we need to overhaul the system and put in place checking mechanisms that will allow um, us to always monitor what is going on within this particular system. Because, you see, the objective of this system was to improve upon the manual system. So if you read the document, the policy document, you see that it was to create transparency, fairness, and a quick del delivery of um, uh, uh, services to parents or students who apply to various uh, secondary schools. So the transparency and the fairness bit of it and the equity bit of it have all been defeated. Now people need to pay before they can get what kind of whatever school that they want, whether they deserve it or they don't deserve it. So 
the, the objective has been defeated, and therefore we need to overhaul the system. The next thing we have to do, which is in, on, a, on a more uh, long-term basis, is to adopt this policy that was brought by President Kufo, the school model system. You see, one of the challenges that we are having is that the, the, dis, the discrepancies between the schools in terms of our facilities is so wide that every parent wants the world to experience some kind of secondary education that will um, enable the, 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 the child access at least one good quality secondary education. And in doing that, most some of these parents who have the financial assist, uh, resources are ready to pay whatever amount. So we need to go back and make sure that at least in every district, we have at least one secondary school that has got all the resources that students need. So that at least we'll be able to create some of the precepts in some of the districts. We create some of the Infante Mine Girls, Infante Pim, Wesley Girls in all the districts. If we do that, that pressure on the category A schools that have become something like a, a, a cash cow mm. for these people would reduce uh, substantially. So these are basically the issues that I, I would want us to look at. And even we also have to look at our own attitude as a society that we, we are, we are fueling this. If you are willing to pay, it means you're also causing, you are part of the problem. So our desire to get good schools for us uh, well, should also be looked at. Do, do we have to bribe authorities? Do we have to pay money to secure placement for our horse? I, 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 I want to say no. So let's look at all these things and uh, probably we'll be able to uh, minimize this uh, 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 challenge that has faced the system. But we need to overhaul the system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been in the, in the, in, in, in the process. It's, it's been around for more than 15 years. And we need to overhaul it and put in certain mechanisms. In this time and age, there are a lot of ICT uh, technological things that can be put in place to ensure that the system is robust enough not to be manipulated by um, uh, others. So which system do you want in place? Please. Um, the so so which sorry. system are you calling for then? No, I'm talking about we have to get an advanced technological system that would enable us, note, I mean the authorities, see those who go into the system, those who do the placement, those who are uh, uh, trying to take advantage of the placement and all those things. That is what I'm, I'm talking about. The system that we are operating now has proved that it's not feasible and people are, are going around it. So let's, let's maybe open up and get more advanced technology that will be so robust that when we are placing students on merit, we are doing solely that. And also, let's also check the background of those we are employing to work on these things. So that at least those who brought certain level of integrity and honesty should, should be allowed to work, work in there. And again, we have to get in-house uh, mechanisms to monitor, um, monitor this, <laughs> this uh, process. Mm. Dr. Pitanti, thank you for joining us here on The Pulse. Well, Minister for Education, Dr. Yawase Jidum, says uh, persons found uh, wanting in the expose uh, will be dealt with as he promises to work with the relevant security agencies. The church, Presbyterian church, how do I tell the moderator that the school that you funded and continue to fund and provide resources, if you want five or 10 students to go there, I won't allow you. So it's a system that we came to inherit. If, unfortunately, people are using dubious means to get access to something that has been set aside to these key supporters of education in the country, it has to be stopped. And that's why I embrace the documentary that has been done. As soon as we know the content, we'll respond appropriately and we'll work with the security agencies to ensure that this year's placement will be flawless and that nobody, nobody will be able to take advantage of something so sacred as Free Senior High School and give an opportunity to everyone to be in. I'm so happy, though, that um, something has been done and um, we are going to embrace it and look at 
plug any loopholes that's out there. Uh, the protocol from the senior high school headmasters, we, the, nobody approves it. They just have loaded. So if the high school headmaster has 50 people on protocol, they just have loaded, and the technical person has to just say approved. You don't vet it. So the idea that you sit there and you are determining, no, you see, uh, what happens with placement in all schools for that matter, and category A schools for that matter, is that 30% of all the placement is set aside for students who went to public junior high schools, a proxy for disadvantaged. So until now, until free senior high school, if you go to a school like West Legal, only about 5 or 10% at most who have gone to public schools. This new system allows a minimum of 30% to come from those who have an equity intervention so that they too can have access to schools that they will never have dreamt of going. Meanwhile, Parliament is admonishing the Office of the Special Prosecutor to investigate the issue. Uh, the Director General and the Minister are the two persons who have access, unfettered access, as far as the placement system is concerned, and particularly so to do with Grade A and Grade B schools. So if we have seen that um, placements are being sold and auctioned for persons to get their awards into Grade A and Grade B schools, <laughs> you cannot tell me that. Uh, the, the minister uh, can train innocent. If he knows that he hasn't done that, he's done no wrong, then he should be the one eager. He should have been championing the call for an investigation to fish out those who are doing it so that he can exonerate himself. Barring that, and given the liturgical attitude of security agencies towards investigating this matter, it seems to suggest that it is an institutionalized cabal that is at work. And perhaps there are many tentacles that the octopus has. So my suggestion would be that at this point, we ought to be looking at the Office of the Special Prosecutor or the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice to look into this matter. The disinterest of the security agencies is very telling. And the fact that quote unquote, this has been known to be happening, and yet calls for an investigation have not been championed aggressively, particularly by the ministry, leaves a lot to be desired. The immediate past director of uh, GES, Professor Kweku Pukwamankwa, names uh, those who should be held responsible for fraud in the system. If there's fraud in the matter, then myself as director general and the minister should take the responsibility. I fully accept that and I fully agree, but that is also the reason why I knew that I'm part of it. I took measures to ensure that the issues relating to corruption and the place on the, on the payment of monies and things like that have been dealt with. And I wrote to the CID and then the BNI. 